During times of really hard moments, I like to focus on the positive things. What would the point be? Having a video discussing how disappointed I am to have an abortion, when quite frankly, I am not disappointed to have an abortion at all. I'm happy, I'm happy I made the decision. That yes, in fact, was miserable is all hell. To be completely blunt, talking about something that people are too scared to, who have went through something like this, and felt the same emotions as me. What's to say that there's something messed up about that? Wanting openness with the reality that I am just a human who goes through things and sometimes they're gonna be fucking shitty as all hell and I'm just gonna wanna be happy about the food that I can appreciate when I can't really do anything else. When you've just had enough of your own life, sometimes it's nice to watch someone else's. When I go through things in life, yeah, there's going to be negative ass shit, to be completely blunt. But that doesn't mean that I have to dwell on that and make my whole life existence based off of that one negative thing and surrounding that for terms into the future. I can only do what I can, as can other people. If Joel down the street threw a bottle across the room and broke it, you know? Like, shit's, shit's gonna get thrown sometimes. And then, and then it's gonna happen. You just, you just cope with the consequences if you're affected with it, fairly. What's to say that any of these consequences would have any effect on you? What's to say something that I wanna share can affect you? It does affect you, but it's going to be positive or negative. I'm not going to be able to control whether it be positive or negative. It's how you choose to take things in, and I don't control that. You control that. You control how you internalize what's going on in reality. You can be completely relieved about something when you never wanted it in the first place. So when I first moved, I got this mattress in a box and it didn't really fully inflate till it's full size, but I had to suffer with it because I didn't have a mattress otherwise and I would have to repackage this and ship it back to them to get them a mattress back so I could get a proper inflating one. So, I mean, my sleep was quite horrible in the beginning I think of moving. I have to I have to act fast because my mattress is inflating. When that one thing can take away from many other things, from the chance of an existing life that no one else wanted, what's to say it's not selfish bringing your own child in the world when there's so many others already here? came back from the hospital just now uh for the most part the three hours for the procedure was mainly just me sitting there waiting for the medicine to kick in they gave me codeine uh tylenol 3 um some thing that was tiny that goes underneath your tongue to dilate your cervix and two antibiotics and then i felt a little derp. The surgery procedure itself, the suction part, that wasn't painful at all. It was more so just the needles. The needles made me tense a bit. Other than that, I took it like a champ. The after feels, they tell you to eat 
right after. I went downstairs and it, as soon as I was in the food court area, I felt like I wanted to puke. So I ran to the washroom after buying water, took a 12 hour gravel and ate one of those gravel chews. I think the nausea is from the emptying part of my uterus because it feels strange. That's for sure. I do have pain going on, but it's quite mild. I have some painkillers I'm going to be taking once these ones wear off. I'm, but I'm going to see like how much it hurts. It's very fast. Once it was finished, it's basically like you can leave. Riding in the car felt like shit. <laughs> My roommate had a hat that he was going to throw out. And he's like, well, I guess... I don't have a bag, but I have a hat. I was like salivating a lot, but I managed to like pull it together. I haven't puked yet. I'm gonna have to wear a pad for a month, and that's not something that I normally do. So I was not prepared for that. I bought stuff on Amazon. Wearing normal underwear, you have to wear pants that do not show your underwear line. I don't want to pay like a really high price for like those seamless panties because i need sweatpants anyway good old friend amazon this is going to be a similar type of thing i'm going to be doing called amazon reviews because i got banned from reviewing on amazon because there was somebody that sold a knockoff battery grip for my dslr camera i left a fair review saying how it functions and how it doesn't function for the secondary battery. I guess the seller was displeased with my review that was fair and reported me and after that I haven't been able to review on Amazon. I contacted Amazon two times and they told me my reviewing would be reimbursed after they looked at my case. The first one she said on the spot that it should be reimbursed after 24 hours, nothing. And then I contacted them again, and that time she said she'd check it out, and in 24 hours it'll be reimbursed. Nothing. So, I guess I'm perma-banned on Amazon, but I buy so much shit there. These pants, the ones that I'm wearing, I got off Amazon as well. They're a pair of, like, harem pants. So they've kind of, like, hippie boho pants. They've got elastic up here, a little pocket here for your phone or something. And then they've got elastic in the bottom. Spackling paste for filling in some holes in the wall. It got a little dented. I don't think that'll affect the paste. And I bought this set of panties. They're like booty ones. Because I got an IUD inserted as well, I cannot insert, insert anything vaginally for about a month. There's four here. I'll put all the links to this stuff in the description down below if you are interested in these things. I got two other pairs of boho hippie kind of pants. I bought two extra pairs of pants knowing that I have to wear pads. These came with something extra that I didn't know. I wouldn't wear this. I don't like flowers. The other one comes with a flower headband too. A headband with like a, a kind of cross fabric thing. Fabric is decent. It's cute. I just don't like to wear stuff like that. It looks like retro flowers. To anyone that wants these, just tweet at me and I'll just pick somebody random. So I know these aren't something that nobody wants. Why not overly care about those lives instead of something that exists inside of somebody's body that doesn't have to that never had existing organs in the first place why not care about the actual existing organs that are already here on the first place why not be happy for the choice of life and fair self-growth and improvement why not be happy that you can eat a meal hey there so i just woke up this is orange soda and they didn't send me the right soda i fell asleep with uber eats open because I, I wanted cream soda and pizza. I think I also got two drinks, not one. I thought I would do a mukbang. A whole bunch of food that I've never had before. A small pizza. It's got zucchini, roasted tomatoes, 
pesto sauce and plant-based cheese. So we got a vegan pizza up in here. I've never had deep fried pickles before. So we have deep fried pickles. This is a calzone like pizza pot thing. It's a giant thing of cheese. So this is all vegan. From my awareness at least. Got two sauces for my pickles and my crust. Honey mustard and I got Italian marinara. If it's not apparent, I was super mentally out of it during the whole process. And I don't seem like myself. Yeah, here's to new beginnings. To live where I live. Let's try these pickles first before they get cold. To have all the opportunities I have. I didn't actually have healthcare in Ontario during this time at all. I came from British Columbia, mm. and when moving between provinces, you have to wait, wait about three months to get health care. I was super stressed out about financing. Planned Parenthood really made this such a relief for me. If you live anywhere in North America and you have a Planned Parenthood resource like that, and you're in a situation like mine, they can definitely help out with financing any kind of medical emergency like my situation. I couldn't afford temporary medical insurance at this time either, especially having to move again, much less wait a month with the insurance. I was pregnant then and needed it handled ASAP. Ooh. Comment in the comment section down below if you hate mustard. I was really starting to scrape by money-wise at this point, so I was really valuing. It's actually really good together. All of the help and support that had been brought to me at this point in time i wouldn't be here without all the help that i've gotten i'd literally invested all of my money into relocating and putting money into my my goals and all this new media gear that i had gotten so that i can dedicate my life to creating so from unfortunate events i managed to lose my savings well i talked to you blabbing through my food mouth i wanted to make this to clearly not bait this title. I left my post activity for a while there. I had a lot of other things go down, like this fat Pete's pocket. <laughs> I did once have enough savings to find some stable work once I got out here, so I did plan, however. What's so going? Bigger than my head. <laughs> I didn't realize this would be so big. Things don't always end up as planned, and that last living situation took a real dramatic turn for the worst, that's for sure. In that last living place, the drama was next to impossible to actually do any work. I'm sorry, when the dude came to the door, he's just like, are you sure you can hear me? <laughs> the environment was really bad. People that came to my streams when I did stream during that time frame could hear it all happening in the background. It was really crappy. Because I had not been super used to making videos, it was hard to talk about things while going through them. I just got ordered way too much food. My anxiety and depression were really so bad, taking in everything that had just happened to me the last four months. This is how you do a mukbang properly, right? Stepping into my whole new life, it was horrible to have to like let go of all these opportunities that I had while I was sick. I could barely believe that I had to move again, but I'm really so lucky to be in the place I'm living in right now. Everything is so much better if that's not apparent from my recent posts and whatnot online. I'm so happy to be back to myself again, however, and be able to embrace everything properly like I had originally planned when I first moved here. During the surgical procedure, I ended up getting an IUD put in because you're more prone to getting pregnant after the surgical abortion or any kind of abortion so this one is five years and i felt that one to be the most practical option for someone like me so i'm in the hospital right now and there's like no one in here because it's so early in the morning this is what i'm getting after the procedure i believe it's called an ius because it's a hormonal iud and it's supposed to last for five years so hopefully that works out really well and I don't have any problems. It's supposed to have the hormone progesterone in it and previously I used a cream that was progesterone and it helped me a lot with my cycles because I also suffer with severe cycles so I'm hoping that helps out a lot and maybe I can get those two days 
out of every month back. Well, three, if you count the day that I have like severe depression before my cycle. But before, all I was using for contraceptive was condom pull-out method because I am the type of person that can't use hormonal birth control because it makes me really sick. I actually started it at a really young age. I was 13 because even early in in my life, I had a lot of symptoms with my cycle. I have about, I think, an hour before I have to check in because it's at 7.30. Yeah, I have about an hour. It's supposed to be about three hours in total for, I'm getting the vacuum um, procedure done and it's only supposed to actually take about 10 minutes. I'm kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's my, it's my first time. I'm just more so paranoid <laughs> about afterwards and maybe getting sick because like I said earlier, I don't handle nausea very well. The only thing that I hate is vomiting. Other than that, like, I'm not a very picky, complainy type of person. <laughs> the abortion itself, I wouldn't say I had a choice in the matter as much as one would normally assume. To <laughs> insert all the angry, angry commenters who can't have children. For this type of abortion procedure, the utensil they use that they call the vacuum isn't actually a vacuum. It's more like one of those icing types of utensils you use to absorb all of the product you're going to apply onto a cake. I found out at six weeks, which is quite normal. I read at least. Since at that point, I could mark that I missed my cycle. I was already getting chronic nausea. In six weeks. I, me I mentioned I suffer from emetophobia. My emetophobia, which is an irrational fear of vomit, get a lot of other mental problems with it, like OCD, anxiety. The state mine is that it's mainly just when I feel sick. I go through cycles, feeling sick and getting anxiety and then feeling worse. Stress when you're pregnant is not good. I mean, when I was younger though, if somebody vomited, I would run to another room and hide and cry. Now, if somebody were to vomit in the same room as me, I'll just jump. <laughs> like, you can tell I'm scared, <laughs> but I can control it. I've kind of, like, tried to force myself out of that fear. Being around, like, drunk people and stuff like that, I mean, it just got me more comfortable being around it. I, I mean, I'm still obviously scared. I don't know, maybe it'll be something that takes time to grow out of. I think it's because my earliest memories were trauma around getting sick because I have a sensitive stomach. I started to feel really suicidal. I was just chronically nauseated all the time. I was constantly taking gravel, which... If you live in the U.S., it's like Dramamine or Dramine or something like that. It's essentially like an over-the-counter anti-nauseant. It's used for motion sickness. It also works really well if you have the flu. It'll stop your vomiting. They actually administer gravel in hospitals. I've had it through IV, for instance, when I was really sick. I was having a very insufferable time being pregnant on my own. I feel like going through that moment, I always questioned if I was the type of person who could even handle pregnancy, knowing that I have a problem like that and pregnancy... For a good like three to six months, you feel like a piece of trash and you're just chronically nauseated. Like I never realized how bad that nausea would actually be for me. I mean, I'm for sure it's like heightened since like I'm going through anxiety at the same time, which is not good for those hormones, which mind you are everywhere. Oh my gosh. I'm probably the worst emotional experience in a very long time. When I first started talking about my mental health, Way back in like, I want to say 2015, it's five years ago. I went on a mental health journey and I tried medication. That was a really dark time in my life. A lot of changes happened. I started pursuing other things in life because uh, things were no longer making me happy, obviously. So I had like what some people like to say, an existential crisis. There were points where feeling pregnant was very unbearable, especially since um, A, it wasn't something I had planned, B, my workflow the last two months prior to that point in time was not the most consistent. I've kind of had a really messed up journey since I moved here. I'll have some other story videos about each separate event because there are a lot, that's for sure. But this one <laughs> is focused on the special one that's recent. 
I thought I'd tell it while it's fresh. I don't really like retelling the story to lots of people. I've told a few people who are close and some people who are like newly close in my life. Yeah, this is just not one of those things that you want to keep telling. Why not broadcast it to the world? The guy who I had met who got me pregnant. I was kind of unsure if it was something that he did on purpose out of spite because this guy was pro-life and he seemed to turn on me oddly fast. I was seeing a lot of red flags. After this weird altercation that we had over Messenger, stuff really came the centerfold that he was a narcissistic manipulator. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. It started out like, I only knew this guy for a month and we were casual partners and I trusted him because he seemed from the outside like a very trustworthy person. Like, I wasn't in any immediate danger in the actual times I've hung out with him. Things were weird, okay? I wanted to work with him because he's a photographer. In that thought line, when we were hanging out, things didn't really go that direction. It was almost like the more he got to know me, the more he pushed that idea away. He said things like he had money, yet he didn't want to pay for any of my services like modeling, interior design. In our last conversation, after the last time seeing him, he wanted to just copy my interior design direction. I mean, you really can. Like, I live in a room, and then I have a half bathroom, and this dude has a house. I was being practical and fair, and I'm just like, well, if you'd like, I can source out products for your whole place and place them install them and he's just like oh well no i'll just i'll just look at what you're doing and copy it i'm just like you can't we have completely different spaces and completely different lifestyles like what is your logic man i mean i didn't say that part but like what is your logic i think he took that extremely personally but the whole time after that conversation that we had towards the end of our friendship there were some other times when i was hanging out with him where I could tell that he was just trying to pick my brain for like anything to kind of help him with his career path in the stuff that he does. He does some broadcast things. I'm not gonna talk too far. I'm not gonna mention this person's name. The previous girl he was with before me, she was like a 20 year old. She just wanted to bang artists. And I think he assumed that that was me. Like I'm just that fangirl, but I'm not. Uh, he didn't really real- I don't think he fully realized that either until our last conversation. He tried to hold what he does against me psychologically. Once the idea of me being pregnant came up, he believes that the man should have a say because it's, it's his sperm. I'm pro-choice, you know, like some people like to say they're killing a baby. I just killed a cell that had no organs that looked like kind of like a jellyfish, I think. I have no problem. like. I feel a lot of relief from my experience that I had because I would not want to bring a child in the world. That makes me think about that guy. Some people would say that's selfish. Sure, it's selfish. I want my life. Uh, I want to work. I want to do a lot of things. And I want a family plan. And I want to have a partner that's there if I do decide to have a kid. Because mentally going through the pregnancy Personally, being suicidal in the beginning of that, doing it alone, I really don't think I would have been okay. I was reading stories, and it gets worse the further in you go with pregnancy, too. And, like, my friend, Lucy, on YouTube, like, she's she was going through some things as well. She has support, and she doesn't have the same mental issues I have. If I were to endure something like pregnancy, 100% need that person. That gives me that comfort in that state. And see, the thing is, in that state as well, the only comfort that I've ever found is comfort in myself. So I isolate when I get really nauseated because I ground myself that way. When you have lots of anxiety, if you know what that's like, a lot of the time you can get really irritable or agitated in that state when you're trying to relax yourself. Out of awareness of that, I isolate myself and I calm myself the fuck down or wait until I feel better. I've always done that. Uh, people who were once friends in my life, they know, they knew me to like have a sensitive stomach 
and whenever I felt like trash, I would just kind of leave or kind of go in silence for a bit. That's me going into my meditative kind of state mentally, just trying to calm the hell down. The cheese is cold in this half, it's not even melted. Sorry for the additive discombobulated sort of thoughts I'm putting in here, but the suction vacuum utensil, they essentially just spin it around inside of you cleaning out all of the pregnancy cells because at that point they have not yet formed a full fetus. Back to this dude, from what I had the idea, he used to be a lot more eccentric than he is now and he now prides his person off of following what everybody else does as if that's what growing up is. I understand adult responsibilities, however there is no one way to be an adult. And out of his lack of understanding for how I am and not knowing how I have an audience that's so fucking amazing and dedicated, have the people around me that I'm lucky to have, I believe he felt personally attacked because he turned just very defensive and started projecting on me super hardcore. It started the last time I saw him. We started having a debate about why I believe it's unfair to fuck a 16 year old. Do you realize the psychological imbalance there is there? And there's no way you're gonna get a 16 year old that knows what they want out of life as an adult much less be in a relationship with somebody that's older and he's just he just wanted to excuse it and say that it was fine as long as they're fine with it and I told him I can't even with anybody under 20 <laughs> like I half the time I can't even with anybody younger than me I feel weird when somebody is like under 20 and I'm 25 <laughs> And I was starting to feel that way too when I was like 21. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And I'm not really into people who are younger than me personally because I see like the, the mental differences. I mean, lots of people who are young, they don't really know who they are or what they want or how to go about things in life. Like they're all learning everything. But I was in that spot, I didn't feel very dateable either. Which is kind of why a lot of my relationships they didn't last very long. Especially knowing like I wasn't super compatible with certain people that I was with. Like, dating the completely wrong types of people for me. So I was kind of like delusional to myself. Which is very common among young people. They don't they don't fully have the full view of themselves fairly yet. So this is the part where this guy really fucked with me. Out of knowing he's going for these young people. After we had that debate about the age thing started talking over messenger that's when i like brought up like there's a potential that i'm pregnant like, the first time we hooked up i took plan b so there's a chance that the plan b didn't work and it wasn't that he tried to spite me if the timing is right i would have had that moment happen after i took the plan b i have this idea that he might have wanted to convince me to have a child with him out of his debate about pro-life i literally didn't say anything he's like well it has a heartbeat as soon as it's conceived it's like no i didn't even debate the logic points either he because he just wanted to say that as soon as you get pregnant you're killing something and you have no right to speak for something else that lives <laughs> when you first get pregnant is an egg got fertilized <laughs> So there's an egg sitting there that's fertilized and it, it sits there and it burrows in your womb for a while like that. Your body has to hormonally prepare first. I was reading some things and there's a lot of evidence pointing towards it was the heartbeat that it, it has in the beginning is a sign of its growing existence because it's attached to you over Facebook Messenger, he started attacking my character. And he tried to excuse it with things like, I'm trying to be a fair friend and be honest with you about how selfish you are, how not humble you are, and how you talk about yourself way too much. And here's me like, you're talking about yourself equally as much. One person gives the conversation, the other person gives the conversation. Like instead of like asking questions too much, sounding like you're doing an interview you casually conversate with what you feel comfortable with and that was how i was navigating conversation and i knew that there wasn't an imbalance 
of the things that I was doing versus him. I bought him like food too. He took it personally that I didn't ask him what he wanted on the Chinese food menu. But the thing was like I ordered a buttload of food and it was everything that was vegan on the menu because he's vegan too. I didn't want to buy any more food. Like why would I need more? I was already eating the leftovers for breakfast. When I met some of his family that I lied about what I do for work, I'm like, no, I didn't lie about what I do for work. Yeah, why didn't you just say you're minty Oreos? I'm like, because that's not generally how I present myself based off of what kind of job I'm doing. Sometimes you're doing a project and you're, be, you're producing something or like doing some other art area. Like you don't always present yourself as, yo, I'm insert artist's name. I hadn't been, been really doing minty Oreos for a while, okay? Doing some jobs more focused on other people and not myself, like that's, that's a huge reason why I moved. Because I was losing passion just focusing on myself vapidly. I'm not that kind of person who can just go forwards in life doing a career path that's only focused around myself and taking pictures of myself and filming myself and editing myself like I like to give to other people and that's what made me start this path in the first place was giving to giving thought myself experience sharing things with other people showing people what matters to me and what I care about and maybe reflecting those thoughts can potentially awaken something in someone else that inspired me to do this I got brought back to that thought and like why I lost my passion living in a small area as like lucky as I was to live in the area I was living in it was beautiful but like, I stopped doing like, doing hair and piercings and pursuing certain things they weren't they didn't have any growing knowledge points that kept me interested in continuing I just felt like I was in a repetitive cycle loop doing the same things over and over again I know I'm the type of person that needs to do something where you're constantly learning and growing that's something that keeps me happy and keeps me motivated in life is the knowledge that I'm going to be experiencing things that I've never experienced before I'm going to be learning stuff that I've never learned before. And even though like all these things that have happened to me the last while are hella dramatic, I'm hella comfortable within it all. <laughs> Cause it's different experiences and you learn a lot from them. Being not as exposed to things in the world, being sheltered in a small area, you don't get that as much. I mean, that's kind of why I went like half-assed nomad life for a couple of years when I first became an adult and I started trying different areas of work that I've always liked. I stopped and took about two years off. Like you guys probably noticed the last two years like my post consistency was a lot down because I wanted to focus on working, saving money and finally moving to a place where I feel like I could grow to be the best version of myself again. I couldn't like do everything I wanted to, to the level that I want. I've always been one of those kind of people that has had big goals and I always like slowly worked up to them. And I just wanna keep challenging myself and see how far I can go. And it's exactly that. Like when, when I ran out of resources in a small area, where did I turn? I turned to the internet because it gives you unlimited possibility in a place where otherwise has limited possibility. And I came on here quite young because my parents, they stopped supporting my directional path, wanting to do things in entertainment. Like I had done performance arts and entertainment from a really young child. I shared all these things with this person. All of the the emotional bumps I was going through and the hellish situation with my first roommate who I thought was a friend I could trust. 
and I started hearing the red flags from him. The first one, he told me how to feel. He's like, you don't like me. I was telling him that I, I enjoyed him as a person, and I didn't say that I wanted to go in a relationship with him. I just said I liked him. That's it. I was just being honest. I just kind of escalated from there. I was lying about myself, which I wasn't. I was completely honest. I mean, he barely knew me. I was there hanging out with him to get to know him. He can see a lot of myself. There's like so much to cover if, if I really wanted to go into it. And he was already telling me that I was talking too much about myself. And then at first, like I tried to think about it, like, okay, maybe I was. But then that was when it got really strange. I would message him and ask him how his day was. And then he was just like, oh my God, you asked me about myself? no way like i wanted to talk about my stressful roommate situation because i had nobody else to talk to i just moved to a new area and he had he tried to hold that against me too like he freaking grew up in the area he's living in and that's all he's ever known yeah of course you're gonna have friends in that area because that's all you've ever fucking known like i came into a new new domain i'm making new friends i have friends online that are now like my real life friends too he tried to hold all these things against me as if i have no friends he told me bluntly he's just because <laughs> i was telling him i'm like i'm not sharing all of these emotional shitty abusive things that are happening to me with my roommate very many people because it's really heavy and he sh he was showing support emotionally in the beginning and that was when i knew he was lying about caring because he didn't care he didn't want to care. He was just obsessed with himself. None of my emotions were valid. He just wanted to tell me how it was. He even told me I wasn't special. I'm just human, you know? Why are you telling As soon as he saw that I had a weakness emotionally, everybody has vulnerabilities, right? He tried to use it against me, which was the biggest red flag in the end. While I was down, he was just attacking me and insulting me. I wasn't even doing that to him. And then I was like, you're insecure. <laughs> you lack a self-esteem. He's just like, I wouldn't lack a self-esteem if I was telling this to you right now. I'm like, yeah, over messenger, not in reality. I really don't think he would have the nerve to say what he did to me in reality. Because I know that none of that is true. And then I wasn't humble. Uh, anybody that is close to me says the exact opposite. And he just kept passively saying things in response like, sure. As if he knows anything about my life. I didn't even start introducing him to anybody in my life. Because I, I like to get a fair idea of a person before I start introducing them to people. I was being shown his life that he's been in for his whole life. I was creating something that's new here. He didn't even put any of that into perception. He had a stable flowing life and he was encouraging me to be open with him. So I was and he was very unfair with that instead and used it against me, which I didn't take personally. I just took with awareness. Some people are pieces of shit who just care about themselves to the point where at the end of a very last conversation, I was starting to feel sick really badly from pregnancy. I told him I didn't want to hang out with him. I wanted to sleep. He blocked me. He phoned me first, asked again if I wanted to hang out. I'm like, I'm not feeling very good. And then he just blocked me. So then I just blocked him. I'm like, fuck that, you're not coming back in my life. Like, a lot of the time, those types of people, too, they like to block people to get leverage. Like, oh, you're gonna lose me. And then they'll, like, unblock themselves. I've experienced that with females mainly in the past. All of those things that he did gave me so many predatory vibes. Because the only type of person that tries to manipulate people to have their way in situations like that. Really special types of people, that's for sure. Oh, this guy, he didn't even really know who he was. He was having a conversation with someone about that over the phone and how he just mirrors other people. But he lied to me and said he was going to support me through the process. He didn't say anything about the decision that I made. I wasn't sure if he just didn't want to accept it and he turned for that aspect and started attacking me because I wanted to get an abortion. Oh, I hope I never run into this guy again. And I actually did. I have this feeling I might. He said he liked my shoes. Now it makes sense why his longest ex-girlfriend of three years got pregnant with him and then got an abortion and three months later was with someone else and had kids. She had three kids too. 
But it's okay, I'm just selfish. Just like him. Just like anybody else who's human, who's taking care of themselves in the world. We're all fucking selfish creatures that live this glutton life. Some people just make choices for different reasons. But we do what we can. And that's what matters. Especially when basing things off of what one understands or chooses to. It doesn't even matter. Like, I don't even care to think in this direction. I'm just telling you guys the story of what happened. When you get somebody who's trying to tell you who you are, trying to use your weaknesses against you, run very far away. <laughs> don't go down that path. You know who you are. Fair friends can give you perception and insight to yourself. Even sometimes their perception can be wrong. And that's why it's good to talk to different people. You get a broader view of self-perception. Yeah, you gotta stay true to yourself. I just know that there's gonna be people that you sometimes can run into that will want to mess that up when they know that someone's got a fair idea of things that they may not. And they'll test that, that's for sure. I'm so full. It's supposed to be emotionally weird still for another week. I slept like two hours. I live streamed at the end of the day yesterday and then I started feeling really off. I'm just crying so much. I've been like worrying about stupid things. <laughs> people I care about my life placement why I mean other people like me are not so fortunate and I'm in a better place the support of people who care But what brought stuff to this point? Not stopping trying. It's getting better. And I remind myself that I'm onto something and I'm more aware. Because it's a reminder of comfort and how fortunate I am. How much I want to do that for other people. My base goal. And why I do what I do in a healthier place. I wish I could say the same for my ex roommate. I stopped expressing myself and sharing parts because it all became really heavy. It always was heavy, but coming out and expressing that openly is, well, of course, it's harder than you can ever imagine. I don't want to hurt people. I was never here to hurt people. How do you share stuff when it's not your place to say anything? It's sharing the experience. I don't have to say any names. And the people that know will already know anyway. That's for themselves. People will take what they want, leave what they won't, don't want. Because people will only choose to see what, what they can understand, or what they choose to understand. I have a lot I can share, and I just don't. But I want to. And then it all just comes up big. The conflicted want out of knowing the value that could be taken to show something to someone to know what I didn't, what I wish I could have, or had someone to. We can learn a lot of things on our own, past the standard normal of what resources are given to us. We just have to have the ambition to keep seeking and finding and knowing it can get better. So hopefully I feel more balanced soon. But it's been nice to be able to do stuff again and live life. So I've been live streaming again lately. Socializing again. Hey. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I have a Patreon if you want to join my Patreon. My peoples up in my Patreon have been so helpful along this journey with me. I have an exclusive Discord on my Patreon, which is $5 a month. And in there, I talk about stuff that's going in my life real time before it makes its way to content. There's also open emotional support in there for anybody who needs it. I have a very warm community of people that I'm very fortunate to have. 